First Thessalonians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. For yourselves, brethren, we know our entrance in unto you that it was not in vain. But even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know. At Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanliness, nor in God, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our heart. In verse 4, King James uses a word when he says, but as we were allowed of God. That word in the Greek means as we were approved of God. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been approved. Oh, y'all say that like y'all don't really know. Look at your other neighbor and say, I've been Oh, go ahead and get ghetto with it. After all the hell I've been through, I've been approved. You ain't gonna see it in the presence of the Lord. My assignment this evening is to encourage this pastor and this great church with a word that I pray will affirm them in the present and confirm them for their future. All right, all right, all right. When I'm reading the scriptures of God's promise to Israel, all right. he told them now that he would give them pastors after his own heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means God will not just throw anybody with a briefcase and a Bible in a position to lead his people. And in this now, that God is showing his love for his people. Because just like you would not leave your children with anybody, there has to be a special somebody. Yeah, yeah. That you put over them, so is God. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but you ought to give God some praise yeah, uh, yeah. for Him being able to look past the exterior yeah. to the interior of a person because some folk look the part on the outside, but can be the biggest fool you ever seen on the inside. In this, God also shows us that he'll give pastors after his own heart his affirmation for who he chooses. Oh, no. And I thank God that he chooses on a different scale than we do. Because yes, yeah. yeah. many times we choose pastors on looks. Oh, now, I'm not no punk. <laughs> <laughs> but now, son, you got a good looking pastor. Brother's looking at me crazy. Check me out to church. I ain't no more. <laughs> we choose on preaching style. We choose pastors based on charisma. We choose pastors based on education and civic involvement. Well, well, there's nothing wrong with those things. They are not God's criteria. God's criteria is, do you have his heart to lead his people? Can I tell you that God doesn't care if you hoop or not? God doesn't care if you have a uh, 
MBA from Harvard. God wants to know, do you have the heart to lead his people? No matter how anointed you say you are, how gifted you say you are, or how educated and well versed you may be, the question is not whether you are gifted to lead God's people. God's question is, do they have his heart? to lead his people. Yes, sir. And the heart of God is a loving heart. Yeah. It's a caring heart. It's a giving heart. It's a dedicated heart. It's a committed heart yeah. that he would do whatever he got to do to supply the needs of his people. Yeah. Yeah. Now this type of heart is necessary because as quiet as it's kept, God's people are not the easiest people to lead. Say amen. I'm talking about you. Because God's people talk about one another. God's people argue with one another. God's people fight with one another. God's people run games and schemes and plots on one another. God's people can be manipulative and insensitive. People can be rebellious and hard headed. God's people can be sometimes. Because while God's people are saved, they still need to be delivered. And so God got to mold and shape the heart of a pastor in order to deal with the not yet delivered saints in the house of God. And I learned that even though God's people are that way, they still want God's leaders to be perfect. I'm reminded of Jesus in Matthew 15 after he had healed many people. After he had saved and delivered many, some of the same folk had an issue with him and his disciples because they did not wash their hands before they ate. It's the way it is today. We want perfection in the pulpit. Even though there is no perfection in the pews. Now I understand that the man or woman of God has a certain, they have to live at a higher standard. But many times our expectation of our leaders supersede our personal responsibility as followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, there's a sister in here that has high expectations. She wants the best man in town. Or are you yet the best woman? My question is, are your demands in life? with your personal responsibility and development of yourself. Yeah. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to spend more time on you. Mm. <laughs> That's why I'm glad that God decides who he places in position. Now we in the church would disagree with that statement because we think it was our fault that put the pastor where he is. And many churches, that's true, but while, while you have a vote in the church, you don't have the final say. God places who he wants there and he will move on you to vote because of the way he wants you to vote. So really, God is doing the choosing. Yeah. 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 Not Mount Zion. Not Mount Zion. Yeah. 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 But there are churches in this country yeah. with members that are wondering, how did he get there? Who he 
he walks over his children. May I add that when you have a God chosen pastor, you have been blessed by God. Because the God chosen pastor is going to love you in spite of you. A God chosen pastor is going to teach and preach to you even when you don't want to hear it. A God chosen pastor is going to pray and intercede for you even when you're mad at him and don't want to speak to him. A God chosen pastor is going to counsel you in the word and help you out of love. And if you got a God chosen pastor, you ought to stop what you're doing right now and give God some praise because you just got a blessing. must be approved by him before he releases him to his people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes now the people do not recognize the approval so God has to confirm to his people that who he placed has his approval. Yeah. 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 See? Yeah. Yeah. In the text yeah. we find God speaking uh -huh. yeah. through the apostle Paul to the church at Thessalonica. A church who had questions about the authenticity of the ministry of the apostles. And the apostles began by saying that we would not be there if it wasn't for the leading of God. And what the apostles mean there now is that in their history of their ministry, they had encountered some things in their history that God led them to face again in their future. Yeah, all right. It was a different place, but the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was a different time, but the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was a different people, but the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Paul even knew of some of the stuff which existed in this place, what God had sent them to, and he tells them upon their questioning of their authenticity that they came to them with their stuff, yeah. knowing how that stuff can be. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. Oh, I feel God in here. Paul tells them now, you know that we suffered some stuff at Philippi yeah. and was treated shamefully in that we did nothing to deserve how we were treated. We were beaten, we were persecuted, we were placed in jail and we knew some of that same stuff existed right here. Uh, but we can because God sent us here. Oh God. And so just like we did we preached the gospel with boldness and, and was bold in our God because while we could have justified abandoning our assignment to save our own lives, we humbly submitted ourselves to God and he enabled us to persevere and finish the assignment he placed in our hands. Uh, it's one thing to go into a situation without knowing what obstacles you're going to have to face. But it's quite another thing to go into a situation knowing the obstacles because common sense will tell you not to go that way again. But God doesn't deal in our common sense. He deals with his divine will and God approves you when you place his will over your common sense. Oh God, I wish I had somebody in here that would just lead over to your neighbor and say God's ways is not our ways because if we had it our ways we wouldn't be dealing with some of the stuff that we deal with I need to talk to somebody that's dealing with some same old stuff common sense is telling you you don't 
over what your common sense says, God will test you before he approves you. Oh, can I say that again? God will test you before he approves you. And that's what the prophet is saying. They were tested before they got here. God, I, I wish I had some bold somebody in here that would just tell your neighbor, baby, before I got here, I was tested before I got here. You don't know what I've been through. I, I was tested before I got here. So don't deny on me. Don't even bother me. Yeah? You don't know what I've been through. Your little stuff don't even bother me because I've already been approved. you in one place to approve you for another place. Oh, I don't know who that was for. I don't know who that was for. But God will test you in one place to approve you for another place. He'll allow you to go through some stuff in one place in order to prepare you for another one. He'll allow you to be broken in one place in order for you to feed a lot of folk in another place. He'll allow you to experience hell in one place in order Rightfully 
dividing in boldness the word of God. Whether they like it or not, declare it. Whether they agree with it or not, proclaim it. Whether they accept it or reject it, give it to them. Because sometimes we don't know what's good for us. And something doesn't appeal to our senses, we reject it. Because we don't know the value that it has. But that's what God says. Give it to them anyway. Oh God, God says it's because I know what they need. I wish I had some real folk up in here. Oh, you didn't want to hear when you made that counseling session with Pastor. You didn't want to hear what he had to say. And you wanted to get out of there as fast as you could. But God said, I brought you here. And I gave him a word for you. If you would just receive that word, if you would just apply that word, you'll put Willie Lee out tomorrow. Oh, if you would just do what the word says. Glory be to God. Oh, we, oh, we. God says, I want to get you to be where I want you to be. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you do your part, God will do his part. Don't compromise, but be bold in God, and God will take care of the contention. Somebody don't believe me, just ask Korah. When Korah came against Moses, stirred up contention among the people, God told Moses, don't you fight Korah, just stay in and on my word and I'll deal with Korah and the Bible says that Moses had the people who were with him on one side and the people who were with Korah on the other side and God caused an earthquake and it took out Korah and his people and Moses was left tell your neighbor neighbor God didn't save me to raise hell God didn't save me to in with the pastor. God didn't save me to bring all kind of drama to the ministry but he washed me and he saved me. He delivered me to be a blessing and not a curse. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. You better be careful about coming against a man or woman of God because I heard him say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And the key word is not anointed, but the key word is mine. Oh God, you missed it right there. Because what you do to the least of mine, you do also to me. I found your neighbor said, let me warn you, baby. You better be careful about putting your mouth on a man or woman of God. You better be careful. I don't care if you don't like what he wears. I don't care if you don't like how he smells. I don't care if you don't like what he says. You better shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, because you are dealing with God. Can I go a little deeper? Ah, because the reason now, you don't want to put your lips on a man or woman of God, because these are they who have met his approval, and he acknowledges them as his, and he says they are my anointed. They are my prophets, and they, and they are my people. And the apostle says, because they were his, they did what he said. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that say, maybe the only reason that I put up with some of the junk I put up with in this house is because I'm his. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that I would tell you where to go and how to get there if I wasn't doing it. If I wasn't doing it for God, I would do something else. He said, no. He said, the reason why that we do it is because God has commissioned us. Ah, so we did what he commanded. We did what he will. And they did it without deceit. They did it without uncleanliness. They did it without God. But they did it according to the word of God. So Paul says, we've been through the test and we are now approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. So we speak not to please men, but God who tries our heart. Oh, what Paul was saying, he said, I preach to men, but I'm not preaching for men. I'm preaching for God. 
God. I'm not preaching to impress nobody. I'm not preaching to please nobody. I'm not preaching to get man's approval. But I'm doing this to get God's approval. Y'all don't mind if I preach it like I feel it. Paul said, we've been through the test and we've been approved by God to preach this gospel. Somebody said, why do I have to go through what I'm going through? I need to tell you, it's just a test, not to destroy you, but to qualify you for approval in the manufacturing world. Before they release the product, they have to test it first. And the test in the test, they will try and make the product fail. They'll beat on it. They'll place it in extreme temperatures. They will play to dismantle it, put it back together again, and test it some more. They will do anything they can in order to try to make it fail. And that's what God will allow. He'll allow you to be beat on. He'll allow you to be put in extreme cold and extreme heat. He'll allow you to be broken over and over again. He'll allow the same folk that you try to help to hurt you. He'll allow some pain. He'll allow some hurt. He'll allow some stones. He'll allow some fire. He'll allow the winds to beat on you. But he won't allow it to take you out. Because whatever you get out in the struggle, he's able to put you back together again. I want somebody to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been broken, but he put me back together again. I've been hurt, but he put me back together again. I've been well, but he put me back together again. Because what don't break you will make you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been through a whole lot. Because when I went through the storm, I didn't quit. When I went through the fire, I didn't throw in the towel. When I went through the pain, I didn't throw in and go away. I've been approved. So if you've been approved, the only thing left is to be exalted. I heard Peter say, after you suffered a while, you will be exalted. I'm about to go higher than I ever been before. Tell your name, I'm about to go higher. And when I go, I don't need you tripping. Cause you ain't gonna stop my trip by you tripping. But I just want you to know that God is honoring my faithfulness. God is honoring my dedication. 
The devil can't destroy you. Oh, you were looking for a place to shout. I, I'm like Bob and Sap. You just listen. You just listen. Amen. Yeah. 